And this morning, Brother Johnson, Brother Johnny, great to, glad to have you in our number this evening. I taught a wonderful pair of lessons this morning, Bible class and a lesson, a great lesson, come out of Romans 12, 1 and 2. So grateful for him, and uh, as we proceed on, Brother Ozan sends his love today. Um, and the wife got over there and, you know, expecting Sister Francis to answer the door, but he answered the door. It took him a little while, but he's up and walking. He said, everything is working pretty good. He said, he put a big old plate in front of his face. He didn't think he could eat it, but, you know, brother always could eat. So, we're, we're glad to hear, we're glad to hear that. So, um, we're grateful, but thank you, brothers, brother, um, um, Javier and, Brother Kevin for going out to see those other brothers and making sure that they get fed as well. Work continues to go on and uh, there's nobody else that's going to do it, so we have to step up to the plate. But anyway, I'm grateful to be here tonight. The lesson won't be long. Uh, the law was a shadow of Christ's coming. That's the lesson for tonight. <clears throat> and hopefully that, you know, we can share some things. Uh, that uh, the Lord has shown us. But the reason we're here is to teach ourselves and for others that may hear the lesson too. Maybe on YouTube or however you download it. And uh, they may be a little without understanding about what we teach. But we teach nothing but the Bible. We don't add. We don't subtract to God's Word. We stay within the laws of God's Word. And we don't, if we can't find it, and you can't find it, then it's not in the Bible. And so, the law um, is a shadow of Christ's coming. And uh, the Bible talks about, um, as we go to our lesson, we're going to look at some scriptures here. In um, um, 1 Corinthians 13, 14, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 14, 33 says, So, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. And so we don't want anybody to be confused because we say a lot of things that, that people look up in the air and stare after we say it as if these things aren't true. But just because someone doesn't believe something that we read and study out the Bible does not mean that that something is not true. Wherever there is confusion, you know the devil is involved. And so we're plain, we're, we want to be use plain speech today and we want to not... Uh, to confuse anyone. There is a story in the Bible, in Acts the 19th chapter, where uh, there was this shrine that was made to, the, to the, 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 the Queen of Heaven, Diana. And uh, that's in uh, Acts 19, starting in verse number uh, around about 24. And they made, they made this shrine in all that region of Asia. And this shrine was uh, so valuable that they made that they all made their living off of making this shrine. And then when Paul and them went through there preaching the gospel, uh, it threatened their, their livelihood. It threatened the way that they were going to make money. And so they had to be, they, they had to stir up some confusion in that town so they could run Paul and them out. And so, you know, that is uh, typical of what people do today. They cause confusion. Where, where there should be peace and where there should be harmony. So, we understand that. And in order for us to, to understand the Bible, there first got to be something that, that, that's mentioned in the Bible. We must love. We must love. Um, John 14 and 15. Now, I've got the scriptures written down. I'm going to take the time to just go over them, just, just to go to them, just so we can read them. Somebody might say, but that's not in the Bible. Well, John 14 and 15 is still in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Nobody's taking it out. And let me say this too. I'm, I'm, I'm not the preacher. I'm just standing in and reading the scriptures. Don't claim to be the preacher, but just teaching loud. Just teaching loud, speaking a little bit louder, just trying to teach the word of God. John 14, verse number 15 says, It says, uh, verse 15 says, if you love me, 
he says, keep my commandments. And that's the thing, that last word, commandments, is the thing that God's, that, that most people say that they're keeping. They're all keeping God's commandment. But you can't keep God's commandment unless you love him, unless you know that God is your master and that he is the one who's guiding and leading you. Look at Matthew 6. Look at Matthew 6 and verse number 24. Because we must know that we all have to have someone that's leading and guiding us. And nobody wants to be up under master. Nobody wants to call somebody master. Nobody wants to call somebody Lord. We're proud people. Nobody wants to call their husband Lord like Sarah did to Abraham in the tent in the desert. But she called him Lord. So uh, we got to know that Jesus is our Lord. We're going to have to respect him. Look at Matthew 6. 6 and verse number 24. Verse 24 says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other you cannot serve God and mammon can serve we can't serve God and mammon mammon is money it is a God it is a God and we have to learn the difference between the, the two in the story in, in Acts 19 in Acts 19 we understand that they had destroying Diana that's what that was their God. That was their God. They made money off that off that particular God and they wanted it, it to be their God. They didn't want what Paul was teaching. They didn't want they rejected that. And so most people are gonna reject the gospel when they hear it. Well guess what? John ten four they said the same things that we're teaching to you now, those same things that we're gonna hear about in the end. We can't change them. We can't change them, they're gonna be there in the end. So no man can serve two masters. Two masters. We have two people in the Bible that we have to decide today which one is the one that we're going to serve. And it's by default. There's an automatic default that we serve one or the other. There's no signed contract. It's what we do. It's our actions that we put forward that tells us which one we serve. And so uh, John 1 in verse number 17 says, for the law was given by Moses, and grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. We thank Kevin for reading the scriptures today in Galatians 3. There's a lot of ebbs and flows in that chapter. But it says right here, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So there is a, there's something right there that, that divides. Grace and truth and the law, two different things. One was given by Moses and one was given by Jesus Christ. Look at Romans 6. Look at Romans 6. We have to know who we're serving. We have to know who we're serving. Most of us do, but we just can't help ourselves. We just can't help ourselves. We got to have the one or the other. And by implication of our lives and our action, that's who we show that we're following. Uh, Romans 6, 16, it says, Romans 6, 16 says, Know ye not that whom, to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servant ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin or death or obedience unto righteousness. But, thank, but God be thanked that ye were, past tense, the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Being, made, being then made free from sin, you become the servant of righteousness. Now we all remember where we came from. We were serving sin. That's why we don't do it anymore. That's why, we, that's why we come to church on the first day of the week. That's why we don't go to the club no more. That's why we, if, we, if we had a, a, a wife and a girlfriend, we got rid of the girlfriend. We told the wife about it. Vice versa, if we drunk like a if we drunk like a, a elephant, then we we don't drink like that anymore. We do it in moderation. We understand that nobody can tell you not to drink, but you know it's a sin to get drunk. We're not a well. We don't drink like wells. So some of us don't drink at all. We put that thing aside. So look at Acts three and verse number twenty-two. So 
So we're getting a little bit further down the road. The Bible is getting a little bit more clearer to us. Then we'll go and get some more scripture. Acts 3 and verse number 22. The distinction between the book of Moses, the law of Moses, and grace and truth gets clearer and clearer as we read more and more. But one's mind has to be humbled so that he might be able to see the truth and read between the lines. For verse 22, 3 and Acts 3 and 22 says, For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him, him shall you hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from amongst the people. Ye are all, ye are all the prophets from, yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that followed after, as many as, as hear, as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets. And of the covenant which God made with our father, saying unto Abraham, And unto thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto your first God, unto, the, unto you first God, having raised up his son, sent him to bless you, and turning, uh, turning away every one of you from his iniquity or of his lawlessness. Lawlessness cannot stand before God. We cannot stand before God. Lawlessness. We will be rejected. Some people say, you don't have to go to church. You don't have to go to church. It says, uh, it says, some people say, uh, to the saved, I don't want to have anything to do with y'all. I'm all right by myself. I don't need to do that. Some people say that, I go to this place, I go to that place. It was good enough for my parents, and it was good enough for theirs, he said. And so if my mommy and my dad did it, it's good enough for me. Well, that sounds good. That sounds good. But what does the Bible say? You see, when you say something like that, when you say what you're, you're going to do what your daddy did and your mama did, did they give you scripture? Did they give you scripture? Did they give you scripture without adding subtraction? Did they study to show themselves approved? Did they show you where to go to get what you believe? Or are you just throwing a bunch of stuff together like a gumbo and you're going to eat it later on? Look at Matthew 12. Look at Matthew 12. See, by default, whatever we say and whatever we do, this almighty God that sees all and hears all, it's got, he's, he's the my, most mightiest dictator in the world. He can dictate, bam, he can dictate like nobody else. He can recall. He can recall. Let's see what, so let's see what that what that means that the Bible says right here. Matthew 12 and verse number 30. Matthew 12 and verse number 30. Twelve and thirty says. He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, as I mean, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blaspheming against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh a word against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. The Holy Spirit is an important part of the grand scheme of things. you got the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But he plays an important role. His Bible says you, if you blaspheme against him, it won't be forgiven to you. Because he's the one that leads us into all spiritual, all uh, John, uh, uh, I think John 16 and uh, John 13 and 16. 
He's the one. He's the guy. He's the guy. He's the guy. Without him, we can't, we can't understand scripture. So if you go to the left or the right, you can't be forgiven because you'll never understand the truth. You'll never get it. you never get it. So um, we'll verify that scripture too as we go on. Verse 33 says, either make the tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. That's why I said default. We serve God, and if we don't, it's by default. Because if we start out as one thing and we end up as another, then that's not that's not God's fault. That's not God's fault. Uh, brother, brother, uh, brother Javier, y'all missed that lesson this morning. He made a, a very good comment, and I knew I never knew that the Transformer movie was a cartoon. Either I forgot that it was a cartoon before it was a reality show. But um, he talked he talked about the the car is transformed into a, a big giant robot. But we now we know that that car can't be transferred to that big giant robot. That's the little car you driving down the street. But it becomes this huge robot. And then he says it transform people transform themselves, transgenders transform themselves from a man to a to a female. And it says that's impossible to do. We know it is. We know it is. But you know this Bible right here says it says that it says that either make the tree good or bad. Either make a tree good. Who's gonna make the tree good or bad? You are. You're the tree, and I'm the tree. So we're gonna make it good or bad. He says. Thirty-four says, "O generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, and the mouth speaketh. A good man, out of the treasures of his heart, bringeth forth good things. An evil man, out of the evil treasures, bringeth forth evil things." Some evil can't bring forth nothing good. And it's a lot of lot to happen. And you change your life, he says. But I say unto you, that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give an account of therein, thereof, in the day of judgment. So all these things you say that sound pretty, that you know, you're doing what your parents did, and, you know, and, they, and, and, and it's good enough for them, it's good enough for you. What scripture you got? That's not teaching me nothing. You're not benefiting me anything by telling me that. Okay, you go to Baptist church, show me what the scripture is. Catholic church, you tell me what the scripture is. Not in the Bible. I can go find I can go find Church of God and I got a, a lesson that I want to bring. I can go find the Church of God in the Bible. In a lot of places. More places you can find the Church of Christ. More places. But there's a reason why that's in there like that. And it's by faith that you believe that the Church of Christ is the one. As many times as you read the Church of God in there, being, being talked about by Paul, you have to realize that it's still the Church of Christ that, 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 that we're talking about. Because in, in speaking about something, you speak, you speak in, through the by and by. Church of the Living God. You can call it that too. Which one is it? Which one? Church of God in Christ. It's in the Bible too. Which one is it? You've got to make a distinction. It says, verse 37 says, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Thou shalt be condemned. So nobody is going to condemn anyone. It's by default that we condemn ourselves by our words. By what comes out of our little mouth with a little tongue right here. I won't, we do it to ourselves. It's just like taking a dagger and just, and just hitting it with a hammer in our heart. Bam, 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 bam. Oh, that feels so good. That's how sin feels. Sin feels good. But there are witnesses, and there's no way that we're going to get away from the judgment because there are witnesses that are, that are going to testify against us at the judgment. It's not going to be like the, it's not going to be like the, the 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 places we go now to get justice. It's going to be a judge, a judge that's sovereign. That, that, that doesn't make mistakes. Look at First John. Look at First John. He does not make mistakes. Won't be a mistake made. First John five.
Look at verse number 5. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Verse 6 says, This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, by the water only. You see, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that bear witness, because the Spirit is true, he says. Verse 7 says, There are three, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And these are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree as one. If we receive the witness of man, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which has testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son has the witness in himself. He that believeth not, God had made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. So we understand that we can't get away from the, we can't get away from the witness. We cannot get away from the the the, the blood, the water, and the spirit that's going to testify against us in the last days. Look at Genesis four. We'll reach way back to the Old Testament in Genesis 4. And I said we won't be long, so you, you know, y'all check me. Y'all gonna be like, wow, he's, he, was, he was right. You know, he wasn't long. Brother Miles used to say, a little dab of do you, a little dab, a little dab of the truth. You can't teach it all in one setting. You got to study. It's, it has to be some time to study, personal study. If you would like a personal study, you can reach out to us uh, through this video that will be posted sometimes after Brother, Brother Friez posts it. Uh, Genesis 4, verse 9. Well, start at verse number 8. Genesis 4 and verse number 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not, am I my brother's keeper? Now, do not, do not lie to God. Do not lie to God. And soon, soon God is going to, going to, He's going to die spiritually, but he, he, he don't lie to God. You know, there are two that lied to God in the New Testament. I think it was Agrippa and Priscilla about a piece of land that they sold. They lied to the Holy Ghost. Now, now the husband died first, and the wife had a chance to tell the truth, but she still lied to you. She lied right with him, and she died. He lied to the Holy Spirit. God is on the scene soon after Abel is murdered by his brother. And look what the Bible said. Cain's trying to be a smarty pants. Am I my brother's keeper? A smarty pants. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. How is it that God's sitting way up in the third heaven somewhere we can't even see him? We don't even know where that's at. He is a man on the earth who slayed his brother in cold blood. No remorse. Is it? Is this something new? People do it every day. Killing people with no remorse. You looked at me in funny in the car next door. You looked at me. Oh, you did not renew my driver's license so I can keep on driving. Mm -hmm. That just happened. In, in Bryant. Ran into a building, killed one people, injured a whole bunch of other people just trying to get their driver's license. Because you mad. This is not nothing new. We see that. So guess what? The blood of each one of those people is going to be on that man's hand. God is going to hold him accountable. So, we see that God is not going to miss a trick. But the, the title of the lesson is, the title of the lesson is, The Law 
was a shadow of Christ's coming. Let's go to Galatians right quick. I mean, I'm sorry, Colossians 2. Colossians 2. We're going to get ready to close. We're going to get ready to close. In here, just a few minutes. And the lesson is going to be yours. But studying can always happen. And like I said, we can always study. Anytime there's a thought or a question that, that you may have, listen to the video. We have, we have an opportunity to study. We can do that. Colossians 2 and verse number uh, 14, I believe it is. Colossians 2, verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. See, this is one right here. This is a scripture right here that, that people twist. That 1 Peter 3.16 talks about to their own understanding. It's plain. And we can go to other scriptures to prove that this one talks about those commandments that were in the law. Which were the commandments? There were a lot of commandments in the law. Probably over maybe 600 and something. But the Ten Commandments were the commandments too that are in the law. People are still holding on to those today. He said, Christ said, I mean the Bible says in Colossians that blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. It was against us. He says, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. It was against us. But some of us try to keep it. Reading this right here, it says against us. And some people still try to keep it. We're using great plainness of speech. We're reading the scriptures. And we're not adding to them, but the, the, the scriptures should talk to you and tell you. Verse 15 says, And having spoiled principalities and power, he made a show of them openly, triumphant over them in it. Do you know how great a battle it is from one dispensation to the next when you had uh, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar thought he was still in power, then uh, the Medes and the Persians came and took over. Well, God had to put him through some things. That's power changing right there. Why do you think you're still in power, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, when the, when the Persians and, the, and the, uh, the Medes and the Persians came and spoiled you? And you still acting like you're in power. Not in power no more. When Christ was on the earth, Caesar was still king. But there was a new kingdom being ushered in. Had power. Spoiled, he spoiled the Roman the Roman, the Roman Catholic, I mean, the Roman Catholic faith, and the Romans. That civilization, he spoiled it. They didn't even know it. I mean, they still don't know it. They still don't know it. They still don't know it. They still have powers that, 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 that be right now. They still don't know that Christ is the king. God is still sitting on the throne. Or they want to ignore it. But guess what? They all have blood in their, in their bodies. They have water in their bodies. The water is when we're supposed to get baptized in. It's going to talk, it's going to testify them in. Testify I guess you in the end. But the body's supposed to be 90%, 70% water, I think they said it is. I'm not sure what the number is. Blood and water. And spirit. And spirit. And they all have that in them. All of them. We all have it in us. Nobody can say we don't. So it says, Let no man, verse 16, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, or in respect of any holy holy day, or in the new moon of the Sabbath day, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Think about this right here. Think about this, brothers and sisters. We ought to meet every first day of the week. When you don't see somebody, you call them. You say, hey, brother, where you was? Sister, where you was last week? We had a good time. And then the next week, you don't see that person again. You call him again. Hey, brother, what's, what's going on? Brother, you all right? When you come check you out, when you come check. Yeah, hey, I'm all right, I'm all right, all right. You don't see him. Then a few weeks pass by, a few weeks pass by. And y'all didn't talk to the brother. Or we didn't talk to the brother. The brother said, man, we ain't coming back. Y'all said, what's wrong with Brother Jones? He ain't coming back to church no more. He gave up and turned his back. So don't you think they had the same problem when the Jews went to, to Jerusalem? To worship all those times, three times in, in, in a year. And they didn't see other Jews. They judged them. Where was you at? You're not at the feast? 
What, where was you at, man? What, did you didn't bring your burn off? Where was you at? You didn't come on the new, you didn't see the new moon so we can be, we can be there on the Sabbath? See, we can't judge them because we didn't do it. But he says right here, he says, he said, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink. Because those burnt offerings, they ate the burnt offerings too. So now, now nobody can judge you. So why would we even be thinking that that's us? <laughs> Not even us. You're talking about those who, who have that mindset, who understood, who understood that. Now, they had to understand this. They had to understand this. I thank God for, for understanding. He said, of the new moon, we don't have to do that, man. We're the first day of the week. Let's go. We know. So, they have people that are, that, are, that are worshiping on the Sabbath day now, Saturday. You have people that worship on Saturday. But they're not going back to Jerusalem. You know, they're not, they're not taking their offering back to Jerusalem. The temple is gone. The Levites are gone. This is something we talk about over and over again. Over and over again. Galatians 2. Galatians 2. And as we get ready to shut it down, we're going to go to one more scripture and we're going to give the plan of salvation. Galatians 2. I mean, we just read Colossians, so we're going to read Galatians 2. And Galatians 2 almost says almost the same thing. Galatians 2 and 14. Not the same thing, but similar, it says. Um... Wait a minute, that's not what I wanted right there, I'm sorry. Galatians 2 and 14, that's not what I wanted. Uh, Galatians 2, let's go to Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians, I'm sorry. I'm going to probably wrote the scripture down wrong. Something like that. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know how I wrote Galatians, but that's supposed to be Ephesians. Um, uh, verse number 14. Look at the verse number 13 right here. Now we're going to read verse 12 because it's, 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 in, it's in there. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes, he you, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. So you have to be made close by the blood of Christ. There's going to be a witness against you. Well, how do you access this blood? How do you access it? Christ is dead. He's been dead over 2,000 years. How do you access it? The Bible says that no flesh and blood can get into heaven. 1 Corinthians 15, I believe in 48. There's no flesh and blood. So how am I going to access it? And this is what salvation is in the blood. How am I access it? So we should want to know how to access his blood. He says, verse 14 says, For he is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in the flesh the enmity or the hostility, even the law of commandments. See, one book says ordinances. This book says the law of commandments over here. What could that be? It could be the Ten Commandments. It says commandments. Contained in ordinances. There it is right there. Contained in ordinances. For to make himself of twain one new man. So making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross. Having slain the enmity thereof. He going to reconcile us all one into one body. One. One, one, one. I used to have a teacher back in, uh, when I was in elementary school. And he was a plain teacher. He always used to say, y'all, y'all is a sailboat. Because we used to say y'all all the time. He said, y'all is a sailboat trying to make us understand how to speak. And he used to say, not one but two. I don't know why he used to say that, but it just, it was something that we said to make him say that. Well, y'all in a sail, y'all is, you know, it's a sailboat. Y'all is not, a, you know, a word that, that we, we, need, we need to use. That's what he was telling us back then. His name was Mr. Bradford. He's been long gone now. Uh, verse, verse number 17. And came and preached peace to you who were far off, and to let them that were nigh 
For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are more you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of, of household of God. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom also and in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. He says that now I gotta read this one again. Because a lot of people say that the temple is in you. And I, I agree. But it says right here, in whom all the body is 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 fitly framed together, grown it, grow it unto an holy temple in the Lord. So there's more, we all make up the temple. Those that are in the body, they make up the temple, it says. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles. I just read that one. Is in whom all the buildings, verse 22, in whom ye also are built together for an inhabitation of God through the Spirit. That is the lesson. And there's questions. I know there are questions because there's a lot more that can be said. I know there are questions. So if you do have questions, we're going to, Brother Javier is going to upload a video. And he, there are many more videos up there that are uploaded already that you can study from in order to get the answers that you need. Or you can call phone numbers that Javier will put on on that particular on that particular uh, uh, video. And it's on all of them, is my understanding. Um, I wanted to make sure I gave the, the correct scripture. John 16 and 13, we talks about the Holy Spirit guides us. That's the right scripture. John 16, 13 and following. So, if you're not a member of the body of Christ, and you know, we have these we have these bulletins outside for anybody who wants to walk by. And just in case you might be in this hotel and you're walking by, you can grab one of them. They're free. They're sitting out there on the table. If you don't, if you see hear this video and you in this area, just come by and get one. It's got the whole plan of salvation on there. Many scriptures, many scriptures that we come by faith in Jesus Christ, Romans 10, 17. What do you have faith in? Romans, I mean, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died and was buried and rose again on the third day. What is important about that? That we believe it. But he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. What is important? Once we believe something, then we must be willing to say, I want that. I want that. Before you want, before you get it, you must be willing to repent and change, because you have to be a member of the Church of Christ. We find it in the Bible. We find it in the Bible. Romans sixteen sixteen salute one another with a holy kiss. The Churches of Christ salute you. One must confess, like the Ethiopian eunuch did. He's going down through the through the, uh, the desert through Gaza. We found some water. And Philip said, "What does hinder me?" I mean, I mean, the eunuch said, what does it mean to be the baptized? And Philip said, if thou will, at this point he understood. He said, thou must confess. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now we're getting close. Now the Spirit, the water, and the blood. Once you go through this process, what happened next uh, uh, during, a, during the ride in the eunuch? They saw water, and they stopped. And Philip and the eunuch went down and... Philip baptized him. So baptism is necessary. What happens in baptism? Acts 2 and 38 is sins are removed. Man, that's just simple. Sins are removed. Acts 2 and 38, sins are removed. Guess what happens? What else happens? You have fellowship. Acts 2 and 41, you have fellowship with others. All over the world, instant. You, you came from a, 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 a default. Now you're in the game. So, so now Christ says, this, this man right here, this person right here, I love him because he loves me. He's willing to give up his life. He says, now he's going to add you to the, to the church, Acts 2 and 47. That is the process. That is the process. Uh, Christ is going to do something in heaven. Uh, Romans, I mean, Revelation 1 and 5. He's going to wash the spirit man in his blood. That's what the blood is. That's what the blood is, but it's spiritual. You can't see it, but he's going to wash you in his blood. He's the only one who can do it. 
Ask me how he do how he does it through the operation of God. Colossians two and twelve. God said in the beginning, let there be light. Somebody want to question God on how he did it? He created the heavens and the earth in seven days. Less than seven days. He created man. Put man on top of it to tend to it. Go ask God how he did it. Put a man in the ark. He made one ark. He put eight people in it and saved the entire world. Go ask him how he did it. Ask him. But be saved when you ask him. Don't go to him and you're not saved and go to ask him. That is our lesson. I hope that uh, I did not leave anything out. Uh, if you're a Christian, if you're a Christian, uh, you don't need to get baptized again. If you sin before God, you can ask God to forgive you and be sincere. And if you sin before your brother, you need to go to your brother and work it out. Your sister and work it out. God can work it out. God gives us every. God gives us all the plan, all the roadmap we need to do and stay in favor with Him. That's all we got to do is just go and work it out. But you can just ask the Lord to forgive you right where you're at. Ask Him to forgive you. If you need prayer, you want to pray for somebody else to stand and we'll pray for them. The eyes and ears of the Lord are open to the righteous, but they're closed to the unrighteous. So that's the lesson. We stand and have a word of a, 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 a verse of a song at this time. Just as I am.